Well, kids these days, right? It is such a crazy season to talk about parenting, but I am thrilled to talk about parenting, and here's why. Because what goes on in the four walls of your home, man, what goes on in those four walls, it can bring tremendous amounts of joy, right? But it also, it can bring some unparalleled levels of pain. But today, here's what I'm believing. I'm believing that that God is going to build up some families, that God is going to build up some parents, that he's going to build relationships, that he's going to build your home as we focus on and really fight for what matters the most. Amen? Will you, I dare you to believe with me as we jump into today's message. And I'm, I'm so excited to be with you. If you're our guest today, thank you so much for taking time to check out Pathways Church. We're praying for you. We believe that this faith family is for you, and we believe that God is for you. And for the rest of our families here in the valley and beyond, we're just trusting that God is going to speak to us as parents and grandparents and people who are single across all seasons and spectrums of of life. We're just believing that God wants to share and communicate his truth today. Now, uh, you might be wondering, so Adam, how did you land on this topic? Well, uh, about a month ago, our executive director, Michelle Vanderlinden, came to me and she said, you know, I've been hearing from the staff, a lot of staff are hearing mainly Uh, from you. Like the reason that we're doing this message, the short answer is because of you. You've been giving feedback and saying, how do we navigate this season of parenting? Because it's been extremely difficult, hasn't it? I mean, there, there are things right now like virtual this and Zoom that, and how do we do work and parents and, and what does it look like? And then we have single parents in our community. We, but we have parents who are going through divorce and struggling in isolation. I mean, Man, years ago when we talked about parenting, there were three big things, three factors, right? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And then there was an era where it was like, okay, we were introduced to these things, right? And these devices changed everything. And so we had to navigate those things. But now we've like, we've just had this this uphill climb in this season where, where things are so extremely, they're just not normal. And so uh, Michelle said, hey, can we uh, maybe do a message? And God was preparing my heart for this on multiple areas, because if you've been at Pathways for, for any length of time, you know that usually, typically late winter or early spring, I'll go away and I'll seek God. I'll say, God, what do you want me to preach on in the next ministry or typically from Labor Day to Memorial Day? And, and this year, I'm learning something. God was sharing something. He said, you know, Adam, this year, I want you to keep a couple open weekends. And I didn't know why, because for me, I'm a planner. I like to have everything set out. I like series just to go exactly as planned and build ministry. That brings me so much joy. And then we go back to the staff and there's just amazing symmetry and and energy and just things accelerate. But God knew then that there was going to be a pandemic. God knew then that parenting was going to be such a struggle. I mean, the stakes are so high right now. We're dealing with isolation and, 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 and kids are struggling. My kids are struggling. We're struggling. I'm a parent. I'm one of you. And in this moment, I, I just want you to know that this is really difficult. I empathize with you. I am praying for you. Our church is for you. Kids, teenagers, Students, I want you to hear me on this. Would you give grace to mom and dad? Right now, families, we're struggling in this, but there's hope. There's hope in who Jesus Christ is and the truth of his word. And so maybe today what you can do, even as a family right now, one of the applications, you can just kind of group up right where you are in your living room. Just kind of do a group hug. Man, I want to be in there. Just group hug that family. Or if you're near your spouse, just grab their hand. Do something as a family where you can get connected together. And, and, and kids, listen, students, I, I want you to hear this. That your parents, their greatest joy is going to be reflected in a verse at the end of the Bible. It's found in 3 John, 3 John 1, 4. It's where he writes this. The greatest joy that I have is watching my children walk in truth. Kids, students, 
Your, your parents, mom or dad or mom and dad or stepmom and mom or, or stepdad, and they just want you to walk in truth. And good news is we're going to talk about truth today. So let's get started with some truth. Hey, question. Do you know when you were the best parent? If you're a parent, do you know when you were at like the top of your game? When you were an extraordinary parent? You know when I was at the best of my parenting skill and endeavor? You know when I was the best parent possible? It's when I didn't have kids. <laughs> because you know what? I had all the answers, right? I would go out on a date with Laura and we would walk into a restaurant, man. And when we were dating and I would watch, I would see all the screaming and biting and throwing and door explore all over the screens. I would think to myself, man, and kids would be so angry and, and parents. And I'd think, not my kid. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I would kind of get judgy. I wouldn't say anything, but I'd be staring and thinking to myself, my kid wouldn't do that. No way. I'm going to parent differently. And uh, yeah, about 19 years ago when Laura said, hey, uh, I'm pregnant. And I was like, awesome, this is so great. And Laura's a massive researcher. And so she was reading all the books, you know, what to expect when you're expecting. And she had all the articles and she was so, and I, she was like, feed me stuff. And then I didn't read too much. I'm just going to be honest. I, I, didn't, I tried, but I didn't do too well on that one. Anyways, there was this one book though, Growing Growing a Girl, I think that was the title. And, and Laura came and she said, you know, Adam, we need to be praying. We need to pray that we have a spirited child. Isn't that an awesome prayer? A spirited child. I thought, okay. The only problem was I didn't know a spirited child was synonymous with a strong-willed child. And when grace came into the world, woo, something fierce hit us. Because I remember going out to eat, and then I saw all the screaming and biting and throwing and the door explore, and, and all of a sudden, we, like I remember sometimes we would have to carry her out of a restaurant, and I would be sweating in all the stairs. Oh, they'd be staring, oh, oh, and you would just think, oh, every eyeball is on you, right? You, you, you know this, parents right? You, you, you know it. You know, and, and before you had kids, like dating was so much different. You could wake up on a Saturday morning, hey, let's just go out. We're, we're going to drive. We're, we're going to go see the fall colors. Where do you go? I don't know, honey. We're just going to go. And, and then all of a sudden, like you have kids and dating is a brand new experience. It's like, oh my word. It's like a strategy session. You got to figure out babysitters and where is what, and you have to have everything lined up and pack in place, and you got to you got to have all the schedules written out, and you're texting the babysitter, and they're at home in the comfort of your home or your apartment, and they're eating filet mignon, and and you're thinking about how much you're gonna have to pay them, and by the time you get on the date, you're so tired, you're sitting at Mickey D's with a Happy Meal, thinking about the toy that you got to bring home to your child. Dating is different. It's different. And what about, oh my word, you don't even really get me on travel. Do you know how hard it is to take a car trip with your child when they're potty training? Because they never tell you when, they, they don't tell you when they have to go. They tell you what? When they're going. It's like, oh honey, can you just give me a heads up? Like I got to get to the exit. Oh, dad, I'm peeing. I'm peeing right now. <laughs> it's like, oh my word. I mean, and airports with kids, whew, Okay. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, if you're single or you're married and you don't have kids, you're like, uh, what are we talking about this weekend? Is this uh, spiritual warfare or parenting? Like, what's the topic? You're thinking, man, this is like, are they worth it? Are kids really worth it? They are worth it. In fact, I, I came across this study and I want to share four stats with you in terms of just how kids are so worth having a family. L listen to some of the stats. Here they are. Are kids worth it? 97% of parents have no regrets in having children. And 75% uh, of parents assert that having kids strengthen their marriage. And, and here it is. 89% uh, of, of parents say that having children increase their enjoyment of life. And then 81% of all parents say watching children grow up is life's greatest pleasure. And you know, this season of my life, now being 42 years old and having an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old, I can attest to that. 
Like it is so joyful. And then when I look back on moments of, of parents in our congregation and I see the joy and the pleasure that they're taking in raising their children, that brings joy to my heart. And I think that brings joy to people who are beyond me, grandparents, and they watch, or grandparents, you know, one of the things that you can do is to give a date night to your kids so that your grandkids, you can invest in them. There's so many great things about parenting and grandparenting. In fact, here's a picture of one of our dads here at Pathways Church. This is uh, Craig Schott. Craig Schott with his two boys, right? Uh, little Noah trailing with a big smile. And Eli, that's, that's an apparatus, by the way. If you've never had a kid, those are really cool. I think they used to be called Baby Bjorns. I don't know what they're called today. But man, you, you, you get all this new gear. Like you, like you pack, pack in place and binkies, all this stuff. It's a whole new, you accessorize in totally different ways. But when I saw this picture on my social media, I thought to myself, man, Craig, Craig is enjoying. He's enjoying. They are bringing, those boys are bringing him pleasure. But you know what? Here's the truth. Craig and Stephanie, they battled infertility. And I know some of you today, you're watching. And this is a painful message because you're thinking, man, we can't have children. And I just want you to know, as a church, we're praying for you. In fact, if you would just submit your prayer request, we would love to pray for you because that's exactly what we did for Craig and Stephanie. And God heard that prayer and did a miracle. And it's been a joy of mine to be able to dedicate those two little boys and watch them grow in a family so full of faith, focusing and fighting for what matters the most. But beyond just the statistics, those four stats that I shared with you, and beyond the experience of, of Craig or myself or many families who are part of Pathways Church, beyond all of those things, I want to share with you truth from God's Word. Because the wisdom of God's Word is going to help us as parents and as single people and as grandparents to understand how God wants us to think about family, think about parenting, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Our main text for this weekend is Psalm 127. Psalm 127 was written by, by Solomon, the son of David. And when we think of the Psalms, we typically think of King David. He wrote the vast majority of them, but Psalms were also written by other people like the sons of Asaph. And, and Moses wrote one of the Psalms, Psalm 90. And Solomon, Solomon wrote two Psalms, one of which is Psalm 127. So we're going to read that together. Are you ready? We're going to look at, at the wisdom from God's Word. And here's what's amazing, because Solomon was called the wisest person in the Bible. In other words, when Solomon writes something inspired from holy heaven by God, listen, we need to lean in. So parents, families, I want you to lean in. I want you to lean in, and I want you to listen to the truth of God's word. Ready? Here we go. Psalm 127, beginning in verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he, for God, grants sleep to those he loves. And all of God's people said, amen for a Sunday afternoon nap, right? Let's look at verse 3. Children, Solomon says this, children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring, other translations say, fruit of the womb. Not fruit of the loom, fruit of the womb. Offspring, a reward from him. Verse 4. Like arrows in the hands of in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Solomon says, blessed. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They do not need to be put to shame when, when they contend with their opponents in court. See, Solomon what he does in Psalm 127 is he actually conjures up an image, a metaphor to communicate truth to us about the reality of kids and family and parenting. He does this elsewhere in the Bible as well. If you flip over and you look at some of the Proverbs, here's what, 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 what Solomon says. He says, you know, he doesn't just simply say, don't be lazy. No, 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 no. He gives an image. He talks about ants. He says, hey, look at the ants. They have no leader and let, yet we can learn a lesson from 
from ants because you know what they do? They gather up food and they store it away, which by the way, the application for parents, young parents, make sure you store money away for your kids, their college account, a 529 plan. Look into it. Make sure you keep saving for kids because kids are expensive. And all the parents of teenagers would say, amen. Yeah, that's right. And so, and so what Solomon does in Psalm 127 is he gives us an image and he talks about arrows. They're like arrows. He doesn't just say, hey, listen, kids are, are great and parenting is tough, so here's what you should do. No, he says, here, they're like arrows. And you get that image and all of a sudden, here's what happens. In your mind's eye, you begin to see your home as an archery range. You, you begin to see your family as a quiver where you put those arrows in. And as parenting, we are archers. So here's the central question. Then what's the bullseye? Like where should we be aiming? Well, in Psalm 127, uh, Solomon gives us four insights, four answers, some application for you and me as we parent. And here's the first thing that, that Solomon says. He wants to begin with our mindset. He, he wants to begin with our thoughts when it comes to our kids. And if you're jotting notes down, write this down. This is so foundational in how we think about parenting. That children are a blessing and not a burden. The first thing that you should think of, according to Solomon, blessed is the man who has a child. They are a reward. You know, blessed in the original, it means happy, happy, happy. The old Duck Dynasty reference. Sort of like happy, 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 blessed. Every time you hear that you're having a child, regardless of the circumstance, you are blessed in that moment. Amply blessed by God. But can we be honest? parenting and kids sometimes feel like a burden. But listen, look, look right here, listen. But a blessing can easily be confused with a burden because both of them are heavy. It's a weighty responsibility to raise children God's way, especially in a time and a season like this. That's why uh, just this past week, Pastor Nate, our children's pastor, sat down with a couple, a couple who's parenting just like you and me, and they have unique calling and some wisdom to share from their own experience. And so I want you to take a moment, and I want you, I want you to listen in on this interview. Watch this. Hi, my name is Nate Feaster. I'm the children's pastor here at Pathways Church, and today I'm joined with Kirsten and Dan. Kirsten and Dan, can you guys uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm Kirsten Berg. Um, I am a teacher. I have been teaching for 10 plus years. I have a master's in um, educational leadership as well. And I'm Dan. Uh, I am a clinical therapist with Outagamie County. Um, I've been working in my role as a clinical therapist for about five years. Um, I've been working with kids in like a clinical setting for around 10. Awesome, awesome. Well, the reason why we have you here today is we want to ask some questions specifically that might help parents during this uh, unusual season that we're in. One of the questions that we have is, it seems like everything around us is so negative and so it's just downtrodden. What would you encourage parents to do during this season to keep, keep their spirits high, keep kids' spirits high during the season? I would say that the first thing that's really important is um, kids mirror what happens at home. And so that's really, um, a big responsibility for parents is because like what you say and how you feel about the world is what your child is going to feel about the world. And so it's not necessarily what you have to say to your child, it's what you have to do for yourself as a parent. Um, so often we get stuck in this world of we have to focus on our child, we have to take care of them. And that's great, that's what we're chosen to do, but we also take care of ourselves. And so if you feel negative or you feel that the world is overwhelming, there is nothing wrong with locking yourself. I call it locking yourself, he can attest to it. But like taking 20 minutes for yourself and just breathing and just finding your own gratitudes. Um, and then coming back out and then sharing your gratitudes with your child. Especially right now, the way things are, it's almost like it's emphasizing some of those points that we might have been missing beforehand. You know, we can maybe cover some of that up because we're so focused on work or we're so focused on moving and being busy and going all around. Well, we can't do that right now. Um, so it's harder when we don't have as much to do and we start to notice those things in ourselves. Like, 
I'm not really taking care of myself, and there's this thing about the house I need to do. And meanwhile, oh, by the way, Billy's not doing well in his virtual learning. So you know, like, you're, you're trying to struggle with all of that. And so really, you need to take time for yourself. And, and I say that intentionally, you need to take time for yourself because you're not going to find it. Because There's always going to be something else to do. So making sure you're taking time to take care of yourself so that you can take care of your kids because you're not going to be able to be your best self and your kids need that right now more than ever. That's awesome. You actually landed on something that's key there. Parents, they don't, we don't necessarily know how long our kids are going to be doing virtual schooling. Right. How, how do parents emotionally navigate this season as well? Like, you look at some parents and they're ready to pull their hair out of their heads and they're wanting to send their kids to school tomorrow. Yeah. For the first time, we are living in, in a like in a pandemic where we don't have an end. Like you know, like I always joke about with kids. Like kids need to know what do I have to do in order for this to work. Looking like for that concrete piece. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to like you know their little brains are trying to figure out what do I have to do so I can do this. Um, as hard as it is, the more you establish a routine and the more you tell them that you do this from here to here, you've now ended that time frame. So their mind can say, okay, well, we're done. I I'm done with this now. And then you sit down and you say, okay, we're gonna do this from there to here. Perfect. You are you are creating ends for them. And not just getting stuck in the rut of everything that's going on. Just, all right, I'm waking up, I'm going to work. Now I gotta be done with work and we're making dinner. And now we're just kind of waiting around until we go to bed, I guess, you know, or whatever. Like, find, find some structure for your own day so you know what you're doing for yourself, too, because you need to have a plan for yourself. You know, there's lots of different areas of wellness to keep yourself well. There's a spiritual wellness. There's physical wellness. There's social wellness, financial wellness. And I think it's really important to kind of reflect on, on where you're at in all those things. You know, if, you're, if, you're well, if all your wellnesses were in a wheel with the different pie pieces, how wonky would your wheel be? And what sides do you need to build up to make that thing roll a little more smooth? That's really good. Now, some of the things that we're hearing specifically from parents is that they feel like their kids are sad or they're depressed. What are some things that parents might be able to do to help in that situation? Or, or you know, what, what steps do they need to take as far as maybe finding their kids some help? The idea of the depressiveness, I, I'm glad you brought that up too because that does kind of tend to fly under the radar, you know, because those aren't the more obvious signs. You know, when you hear anxiety and anger, those are the ones that you you see. You can obviously see that, but you know, depression doesn't have you go at people or like, you know, in a lot of cases, a lot of times depression kind of pulls you away and you're quiet and you're not making a big noise or a big ruckus. And so uh, you tend to fly under the radar and not get noticed as much. But I think those are just as, if not even more important to make sure we're paying attention to. Yeah, whether they're four, whether they're 14 or whether they think they're big 18 year olds and are adult. It starts with asking, are you sad? Are you depressed? It seems to me, and then show them. Cause most of the time they don't know, like list examples of when you've noticed. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that's an eye opening experience to realize that they actually are and then you can start to. And then more importantly, if you, if you as a parent cannot do this yourself, ask your child who they feel comfortable talking to. A lot of our youth are very connected to, you know, peer, you know, to other adults, other friends, other family members. Get somebody else who you know that they can have that conversation with because sometimes the reason we're feeling sad and the reason we're feeling depressed is because we miss that social interaction. We're we feeling miss disconnected. That. Yes. So connect them. Right. Find somebody else and find a way to connect them so they can start to have those discussions. Right. And even those those conversations themselves can sometimes lead, lead to that increased connection. Like, oh mom and dad are seeing how I'm feeling. Like they do notice that I'm just sitting in my room and not doing anything with anybody. Yeah. Like, cause that might be part of it too. So there, there's really no downside to having that conversation <laughs> one way or another. That's Besides so you might get some sweaty pits and you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's so good. Thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing this. has super, been super informative for uh, parents and I just appreciate your time today. Well, yeah, thank anytime, you. happy to help. <laughs> Such great practical wisdom from the Bergs, and I'm so appreciative of some of the things that they were referencing, that as parents, we need to care for ourselves first, and we need to check in with ourselves, and, and so many practical things when it talks about mirroring and routines and making sure all of these things help us to view our kids as a blessing and not a burden, especially in this season. Now, if you're interested in seeing the full-length interview, you can go to Right Now Media and uh, check that out. We'll drop that in the chat box, get that content to you, because there's about 25 minutes worth of uh, information that, that they are sharing with our congregation that I think is extremely helpful. You know, this week I was actually talking to, uh, to Laura about this parenting thing, and, and in like manner, 
like fashion, she was talking about how we as parents are like thermostats. We set, we, we monitor, and we regulate the temperature of our homes. And, and uh, she would agree with, with the Bergs in terms of starting with our children. It's exactly what Jesus did with us. I, I loved how she was talking about this. And she just, she's a, she's a phenomenal mom. And she was saying how Jesus entered into our world. John 1.14 says that he took on flesh and he made his dwelling among us. He moved into our neighborhood. He's in your home if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. He is with you, with your kids. And so uh, enter their world. Set. We need to be strong for our kids these days. See, the heavier, the heavier the blessing, the more strength and the more faith that we need to draw upon as moms and dads, as we parent in this new age. Because I'm telling you, times are so critical and we need to be remaining strong for our kids. Now, here's the second insight that Solomon shares. He says this. He says that that children are the living message that you send to the world. Think about an arrow. When you shoot an arrow, it goes out into the world. What what, what Solomon is saying is that that your kids are your legacy, that they're going to go beyond you. And so make sure you think about what they need before they leave you because the message that they are going to send are going to be some powerful things that will impact generations beyond. This is why this message is so important because what God wants to do with us as parents, he wants to make sure that we understand who our kids are, that that they're from God and that God has has for us a living message that we send out as we parent them. And that's why we have to do what, what Dan and, and Kirsten were talking about. Like we need to teach them about finances. We need to teach them that there's a big world that we need to talk about, about politics and about finances and about all of these different subjects. They're watching you. They're your living message. And you can talk, 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 talk. But I'm telling you, don't underestimate the power of your personal example, your parental example. Because more is caught than is taught. And as they catch things from you, you are preparing them as your living message. You know, one of the ways that we want to do that here at Pathways Church is through one of our outreaches called Project Light It Up. This is a phenomenal opportunity for families. In fact, my family is doing this later today. What we're going to do is we're, we're partnering with Samaritan's Purse and we're going to fill shoe boxes for kids. Give your kids a global perspective. Help them to understand that Jesus is for the entire world, all seven continents. And you can grab one of these boxes today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Just Come by the church, drive by, pick up a box. We would love for you to get these boxes. And then what you do is you do a little shopping and you pack those boxes and you pray over them and then you return them here and then we send off the love of Jesus over this holiday season. You might say, well, you know, Adam, right now I'm single or I'm a grandparent and I can't do that with my kids. Right now we have a need because it's not just our families and families for the globe, but there are families right here in the Fox Valley. We've made a commitment to about 75 to 100 kids right here And we need to purchase gifts for them. And so the total cost of that is $2,000. We're about $1,100 short on that. So if you want to give to that, you can designate your giving. You go online, you can click and text in and make sure, drop down to Project Light It Up and let's meet that goal together because we want to bless families because our family is a living message that we send out. Think about it this way. Think about it this way. Your children right now, your teenagers in 10 or 15 years, 20 years, whatever it may be, they're going to come and they're going to hear somebody like myself, a preacher, or somebody talk about God and our culture. And what comes to their mind, the picture of God, they're going to hear about that God is a father. Or God is like a mother who nurses her child. That's what the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 49, 15. And what's going to come to their mind is either an accurate or a very distorted view of God based on who you are. And it's going to be easier for them to get in touch with who God is if they see God as you were like a father or God like how you were as a nurturing mother. Or they're going to come to God in spite of you. Parents, it's your choice. It's your choice. 
Here's the third insight that uh, Solomon talks about in Psalm 127, that children are from God. Children are from God. He says, they're a heritage from the Lord. Bottom line is, they're not your kids. When you zoom out, you're just stewarding them for a period of time. They're not from you, but they are for you to what? To honor him as you parent them. We just got done with a series called Habits, and one of the takeaways from Daniel's life is that he honored God in the everyday decisions, and then God honored him for a lifetime. One of the ways in which we honor God in the everyday is our parenting. Know that you are doing this unto God, that ultimately you are honoring him as you parent. And some of you right now, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but Adam, I messed up. Like, I I didn't do that well. And right now, as you're listening to this message, you're thinking to yourself, man, I'm grieving because you know what you can do? You can go back and you can apologize. You can go back and you can seek forgiveness. You can go back and you can say to to your child, hey, listen, I just want you to know I didn't do that well. You know what that's going to do? That's going to open up your heart. And when you open up your heart, here's what I know about every kid. Every kid wants to be connected to their parent. And when you open up your heart, they're going to come toward you. They're going to come toward you. And God can do a miracle. God can redeem time. God can give you parenting. Because you never stop parenting, do you? I, I don't care if you're 72 years old. I'm still learning from my parents. They are still loving and parenting me. Now, the phases are different. In fact, in one of the messages I did during a family series, you can go back online. There's kind of four phases of parenting. There's discipline and training, and then there's coaching, and then there's friendship. I'm in that friendship phase. And the goal as parents is that as they adult and as they mature, that they actually want to return. They actually want to call you. They actually love you because of how you parented them while they were in your home. So let's honor our kid. Here's the final insight that that Solomon shares, that godly parenting begins the moment that you commit your home to him. Listen to me on this. Unless the Lord builds your house, parents, you're going to labor in vain. Parents, you're going to try to buy their love. Parents, you're going to be distant from one another. Parents, listen, dads, the best thing that you can do for your kids is to show You can show them how you love and you treat and you respect your wife. Like like what we're doing, we godly parenting begins when we say at the foundation of our home, God is building our home. God is building our home. You know, one of the things that you can do this week is pray together as a family. We talk about the row and the circle and the chair and your personal quiet time. Listen, I want to challenge you to pray together as a family. And I know this is really hard, but, but man, if you can just gather each other around and, and, and you start off with that hug and you just say, hey, let's just, let's gather around. Let's just hold hands, that connection in a very isolated time. And let's just pray. Listen, you're teaching your kids faith. You're showing them that God is at the center. You're showing them that God is at the foundation of your home. And your parenting begins when you commit your home to him. And when you begin to commit your marriage to him. Listen, it's hard to parent if you're not on the same page with each other. It's hard to parent if there is mistrust and brokenness. If there is something that's not connected and working in your marriage. Listen, it's hard to do godly parenting. You have to get on the same page. You have to connect with each other. You have to check in with each other as mom and dad. You have to be connected in this. And some of you are like, you know, Adam, right now, we're not connected in this. We're struggling in our marriage. I am so, so thankful that we have a church that invests in marriages, that we have something called Marriage Mentors. Marriage Mentors is a great, it's a phenomenal way in which if you've hit kind of a speed bump, so to speak, if you kind of slid on some, on some icy roads or whatever and all of a sudden things are, are, are not doing so well, I'm telling you, put down your pride, step out of your shame and reach out to the mentor couples here at Pathways Church. They want to walk you through some biblical principles. They want to help you. They have seen those seasons in their own life, but they know the power and the hope of Jesus Christ to solidify and to sustain your marriage so that you can have a godly home. Don't go down a road of pain alone 
and then get to a dead end, and it ends in divorce. It ends in infidelity. It ends in addiction. It ends, all of those things are only going to undermine and destroy your house. And unless God builds your home, parents, no amount of money, no, more, no amount of emotion, no amount of world's wisdom is going to help you to honor God with your kids that are for you, for him, for you to honor in your parenting. You need God's help. And we have some ministry couples who want to help you in this. You know, as we close today, uh, I want to pray for all of our families. In fact, I, I want to pray for, 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 for you. I don't know who you are. If you're single today and you're thinking, man, Adam, this just seems like this is so, I'm not even in that stage. You know what you can do today? You can begin to pray for your spouse. Pray for that future mate that God wants to provide you for. You say, Adam, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to get married. You know what? Then you stand strong in your singlehood and know that God has called you to be complete in him, knowing that God's going to use your life because someone sent you from your home as a living message. Imagine for a moment across every home here at Pathways Church that all of us as parents we saw them as arrows entrusted to us, that we're blessed in seeing our kids. And then in the midst of the isolation and the virtual, and I get it in the Zoom, and man, I did parent, I did, I did, I did parent-teacher conferences. It was so weird to do all of those parent-teacher conferences on Zoom. And you know what God put on my heart to inspire and to lift up our teachers. Listen, if you're a teacher, we're praying for you. Our administrators, what you're doing right now, it's not like a vacation. It's not time off. Your efforts are worthwhile. Pour into our teachers. Contact them. Care for them. Pray for our teachers, parents. You know what God put in my heart? I had a five-minute window with six teachers from Ella. And God just whispered to me. He said, you tell, them, tell all of them, Adam, that you're praying for them. Tell them that, that the church here at Pathways is praying and you should have seen what happened. We got three or four minutes into it and all of a sudden I said, hey, kind of had my little script down. I said, hey, I don't know if you know, but I'm a pastor here in the community. I pastor at Pathways Church and we want you to know as a church that we're praying for you and that we care about the work that you're doing because you don't have off. This isn't a vacation. And many of you have families and you're struggling to do this. Listen, and you should have saw their faces, the spirit that was unlocked in them as they're saying, thank you. Parents, we need to be strong, not only for our kids, for our educational system. We need to be strong for our communities. So as we close today, would you commit your home to him? Would you commit your heart to him? In fact, maybe you're here today before we get to the home, you're at a place where you've never committed your heart to Jesus Christ. You know how you do that? It starts with prayer. It starts with faith. It starts with saying, God, I'm reaching out to you as a child reaches out to his parent. What God does is he reaches out and he grabs your hand. He says, my son, my daughter, come to the table, come into my house. All that I have is yours. Ask, seek, knock. You're going to find it's going to be open. You're going to have it. You can come to me in confidence and boldness. You can access my love, my Holy Spirit. I put into your heart. I want to put it in there. 24-7, 365, you can whisper, and I'll be there. If you've never committed your heart to Jesus Christ, it's the best decision you'll ever make. You can't commit your home to him until you give your heart to him, unless you surrender it all and say, God, all of it belongs to you. My marriage, my kids, my career, all of it, whatever you wanna do, I'm giving it all to you. And then you confess your sin. If that's you today, say this prayer with me. Father, I just pray that, that you would come into my life. Forgive me of my sin, save me. I receive you by faith. Change me for your glory and the good of so many around me, beginning with my family, beginning with, with my friends. 
Now, Father, I just pray for every single home that's listening today, for every parent, you know exactly where they are, what they're struggling with. God, I pray that the truth of your word goes out and that your spirit takes it and you do a perfect mix of application. God, that you would change us so that we would glorify you as parents, as husbands, as wives, God. In all the complexity, you are the great God who's in total control and total compassion and care for us. We love you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, the strong son of God, who was a son and came for us. Now we come to you in faith. Everyone who agreed with this prayer said, amen.